I'm in charge of sound editing and audio at one of the broadcasting stations, and this is what I experienced the other day. The inside of our editorial room used to get too dark and gloomy, especially at night. So there were a lot of people who said they saw ghosts there. After I joined this broadcasting station, I just laughed when I heard about it. Nah, who believes that? However, not long ago, I had to change my mind. The audio file and film would sometimes disappear every other day. Of course, I was scolded by my seniors because of it, so I worked until dawn to make up for my mistakes. The hallway in the editing room was pretty long, and there was a small warehouse inside the room on the far end of the hallway where the film was kept. Originally, only the people in charge could enter the room. However, for some reason, I kept hearing a squealing sound in the room that day. Hmm. I guess someone's still working. While I was editing, I kept hearing that noise. Wondering who was inside, I got up from my seat, came out into the hallway, and opened the warehouse door slightly. And there, there was someone inside the room. A woman with disheveled hair was lying on the floor, attaching her stomach. She kept making grotesque sounds and crying. She was also frantically pulling out the tape from the film. The scariest part was the speed she was pulling the tape out. It didn't seem normal. It was abnormally fast, and her posture was just... She didn't just lie on her stomach. She didn't have a lower body. I ran away from the room screaming like crazy, and the next day I told my senior about this and the senior who was listening quietly said this. After hearing it, I couldn't sleep at all. Maybe she was looking for the film she had appeared in. It was one night. I was drinking out with my two friends when we left the bar after drinking and chattering for a long time. The last bus had left already. Well, I guess we have to stay a night somewhere. One of my friends told me, and we had no choice but to stop at the motel and sleep together. We lay side by side in bed, and it was about two hours after that everyone became quiet. The one who was sleeping in the middle suddenly woke me up with a frightened face. Hey, let's get out of here right now, she said. What? We just lied down, I grumbled. But she said this again and again in haste. Please, let's go. I'll tell you the reason later. If you want to stay here, then I'll leave alone. I felt something uneasy about her reaction, so I woke up and shook another friend's shoulder lying next to me. But he didn't wake up no matter how many times I woke him up. Since we were all drunk and couldn't communicate properly with each other, I finally decided to go back with her first, leaving him in the motel. While I was just killing my time at a convenience store nearby until the time of the first bus, my cell phone suddenly rang. It was a phone call from him who was at the motel. Wasn't he sleeping? Thinking like that, I answered the phone and he screamed at once. Why do you guys leave me alone in that room? Oh no, he must have seen it too, she muttered blankly. Later, my friends said that they saw something in the room. As one of my friends felt thirsty during sleeping, she woke up and went to the refrigerator to get some water. And at that moment, a woman with long hair suddenly appeared from the ceiling, hanging upside down. Her face was covered with blood. She heard a voice from her that seemed to appeal to something, but she couldn't understand what it meant. Her body was so stiff that she couldn't move as if she had been paralyzed. However, the moment she turned her eyes, the woman disappeared and she was finally able to move again. Early that day, I joined with my boyfriend and went home right away, but I couldn't get rid of my uncomfortable feeling. And I couldn't get over it until the next day around noon. So we ended up heading back to the motel to complain to the custodian. However, the police and police cars were crowded around the hotel when we got there. We found the custodian in front of the hotel entrance and approached him. What's going on here? Anyway, I'd like to tell you that we are very upset and unpleasant that we'd seen something here yesterday. While I was explaining about this, his gloomy face was slowly contorted, and he slowly opened his mouth when I finished talking. There was a woman who was killed last night in another room after being hit on the head by a baseball bat. 
The room where she died was the one right above where we were asleep yesterday. And my friend saw a woman's ghost in the ceiling almost at the same time as the woman was killed. The moment we heard the story, we got goosebumps and came back home hurriedly. The moment she died, she might have wanted to show up to ask us for help desperately. That's what I think to this day. My name is Caitlin. This incident happened when I was 14 years old, and I will never forget this memory. One day, I was at home alone at my house. My mom was still at the office late at night, and my two siblings were at my grandparents' house, which was kind of far away from my home. At first, I was just enjoying my time alone, watching Netflix and doing some fun stuff. However, after a while, I got pretty bored, so I decided to invite some of my friends over. I asked my mom for permission and then called my friends to invite them over. A few moments later, while I was waiting for them, I heard a loud bang upstairs. I was sure that there was no one else upstairs. So I stood up and looked up the stairs with an anxious look on my face. When I was near the stairs, I could see that one of my dolls had fallen. I picked it up and when I straightened my back, something caught my attention. A little girl was standing upstairs. Well, I could feel that she was staring at me, even though I couldn't see her face clearly due to the darkness. I was terrified, and then someone rang the doorbell. I ran to see who it was, and luckily, my friends had arrived. Thank God, it was a moment of relief that my friends came over at the right time. Soon, I got my mind off of the girl I saw. We sat down in the living room and had fun talking with each other. An hour later, one of my friends suggested that we should take some pictures together. So we gathered around one another. We took several selfies while laughing and chatting. Later, as we scrolled through the pictures, we found something. There was a little girl standing behind our couch. What made us even more terrified was the fact that she had no face. I mean, her face was just an empty darkness. No eyes, no nose, and no mouth. Being terrified, I told Cassie to delete that picture right away. However, she said that something was wrong with her cell phone. I snatched the phone out of her hands and tried to delete it. But no matter what we tried, we couldn't delete the picture. Then we heard loud thumps. It sounded like someone's footsteps were coming from upstairs, and our light was flickering on and off at the same time. We thought that we couldn't stay inside anymore, so we rushed outside in a hurry. One of my friends, Christina, suddenly pointed at my bedroom window and said that there was someone in there. I raised my eyes up and followed her finger, and there she was. It was the same faceless girl we had seen in the picture. My friends and I screamed. I called my mom and explained everything. My mom couldn't believe what I told her, so she made me calm down and said that she would be home in five minutes. After she arrived home, she searched the entire house, but she couldn't find any trace of the girl. I hoped that it was just our imaginations. However, we soon decided to move out of the house because I kept seeing the girl after that incident. We finally moved and from then on, my mom never wanted me to be home alone, so I always stayed with my siblings. I still have no clue why the girl haunted me, but I think it was because she wanted us to get out of the house. Well, I'm just glad that I don't see that girl in my new house. When I was in high school, I was crazy about a boy band and used to stay up late at night watching their videos. Because of this, I used to fall asleep at around 3 or 4 a.m. The town I lived in was sort of a new city under construction, so it was really quiet and there was no one outside during that time. One night, it was around 3 a.m. 
I suddenly heard a woman singing outside. It was an old song, and the strange thing was that the woman was singing just one part of the song over and over again. She didn't move on to the next section. She would just start singing, pause for a minute, and then continued singing again. Out of curiosity, I opened the window and was about to sing the next verse of the song to surprise her. However, before that, I sent a text message to my friend. Hey, someone is singing outside and keeps repeating the same part. LOL, should I sing along with her? Not long after, my friend responded, and then I had to shut the window quietly because I was terrified. The text said, Don't do that. That's a ghost. When ghosts find someone to harm, they first sing and then wait for the person to sing along. One evening, I was looking for an internet cafe because I needed to send a few emails. I spotted one in an old building. The sign said it was on the sixth floor. When I walked through the entrance, there was a dark hallway that led to a small elevator. I pressed the call button and when the doors opened, I stepped inside. In a lot of Asian countries, many buildings do not have a fourth floor. The number four is considered bad luck because the word four sounds almost the same as the word for death. When it stopped and the doors opened, I was about to step out when I realized that something was wrong. The hallway was in total darkness. By the light emanating from the elevator, I could make out a random piece of furniture covered with white cloth. It looked like it hadn't been touched in years. I thought I might have gotten off on the wrong floor, so I checked the buttons, but none of them were lit up. There was nothing to indicate which floor I was on. Just then, I noticed something moving at the end of the darkened hallway. I couldn't quite make out what it was, but it looked like a person dressed in some type of gown. The figure was moving slowly down the hallway towards the elevator. It creeped me out and in a panic, I started pressing the closed door button. All of a sudden, the light in the elevator flickered and turned off. I was plunged into the pitch darkness. I was so freaked out, I almost wet myself. Just as I was about to lose it completely, the lights flickered back on. The doors closed. The elevator jolted back to life and began to ascend again. I breathed a sigh of relief. When the doors opened this time, I was at the internet cafe. I went over to the counter and told the girl who worked there and what had happened. As she listened, her face grew pale. She said that some of the customers and a few of her coworkers had experienced the same thing. She had never experienced anything herself, but she told me about the history of the building. Apparently, the fourth floor had been a hair salon at one time. It was prospering and doing pretty good until one of the women who worked there killed herself in the salon. Nobody knew the reason why. The salon continued to operate, but they were plagued by weird and inexplainable events. Sometimes when customers were having their hair washed, the water would turn as red as blood. Other people claimed that when they looked in the mirror, they would catch glimpses of a ghostly figure standing behind them. When they turned around, there would be no one there. Because of these events, the salon developed a bad reputation and began to lose customers. Eventually, they were forced to close down. The building's owner tried to rent the fourth floor out to other businesses, but when they found out what had happened, nobody would take it. Finally, the owner reduced the price to nearly nothing, and it was rented by a businessman who planned to open a stationary supply store. However, when they tried to do some renovations on the floor, there was a series of mysterious accidents. The workmen's tools would sometimes disappear, only to be found in strange places. A large mirror suddenly shattered when nobody was near it, and the workman had his hand crushed when the elevator closed unexpectedly. Eventually, the workmen were so spooked that they refused to continue. The building's owner gave up trying to rent the fourth floor out and just shut it down. He had the buttons in the elevator replaced, and it was reprogrammed that nobody could go on the fourth floor. At least that's what's supposed to happen. For some reason, when people took the elevator, it would sometimes stop on the fourth floor 
and when the doors opened, some people would see a figure coming toward them in the darkness. I honestly still don't know what that was. I had a hobby of capturing some ghost stories that I found on the internet and putting them one by one in my cell phone's album. Then one night, I suddenly had a nightmare. I couldn't move my body at all, and at the same time, something caught my eyes. It was a female ghost sitting at my bedside. She was muttering something while holding my cell phone. And when I looked more closely, I could see that she was watching those scary stories in my phone's album that I had captured, swiping her finger on the screen quickly. <laughs> this is funny. This is funny. And this is very funny. <laughs> this is funny. About a few years ago, I had a roommate when I was living in the dormitory. She was a pretty famous person in our major class and was known as someone who could see ghosts. Anyway, I was in the middle of a test period and there were lots of post-it notes around my desk, which I put to memorize what I had studied. Then one day, my roommate looked at my desk and suddenly told me to take off all the post-it notes right away. Wondering why, I asked what was wrong with it, and she replied, saying this. I woke up for a moment in the morning a few days ago, and there was a woman sitting in front of your desk. And she... she was reading all of the post-it notes you wrote. Nothing could have been more creepier than what she told me. After that, I no longer put anything on my desk. Never. When I was a young kid, we had moved to another house once. One afternoon during the weekend, my dad asked me to go to church with him. However, being a little kid at that time, I was tired of going to church, sitting inside and just praying like that. So I refused, and he soon gave up, and finally, I ended up staying home alone on the weekend. I suddenly felt thirsty while I was enjoying my alone time watching TV. It was about 2 p.m. and I woke up and headed for the kitchen. Then something strange next to the refrigerator caught my eye. It looked like a black silhouette, like a person with short hair and a long skirt. At that moment, I could feel my whole muscle got flinched and strained. Shoot, whatever. Uh, I'm not here to drink water. I'm just here to get some tissue. Being scared, I gave up getting some water out of the refrigerator and then went straight to the bathroom. I grabbed the toilet paper and began cleaning the place around the TV for no reason. I was really terrified at that time, though. I kept trying not to look at it, but then I realized something more frightening. The head of the silhouette was moving in the same direction that I was moving. Like it was literally watching me. I couldn't stay here anymore, so I ran out of the house. As soon as the front door closed, I ran down to the playground, sat there and waited for hours until my dad finally came back. After that day, I remember my dad started to chant the Buddhist scriptures all night long, floating a bowl of water on a small table. In the end, we eventually moved to another place. Me and my dad were talking about a ghost story when he started telling me something about the house we had lived in before. While we were living in the house, my dad started to dream very often. One day, he had a dream that a woman was cutting something in our kitchen. When he got closer, he noticed that she was cutting hair continuously. Another day, he heard the sound of chopping something damp, like meat. When he got closer, he saw my body was crumpled in the sink and only my face was on the cutting board. And she had taken my tongue out and was finally chopping it with a big knife. My dad was able to see her face for the first time in his dream. Her eyes were purely red, and she kept smiling at him with her mouth almost ripped, and she never stopped using the knife. He also said that the woman had short bobbed hair and was wearing a long skirt. I think it was the same day that I saw a woman's silhouette in the kitchen. Since then, dad has visited the church, asking the pastor for help. He even visited the temple to get a recording tape of the Buddhist scripture from the chief priest and prayed all night, but it was all useless. 
So we eventually moved out again soon. And thankfully, my dad no longer had the dream anymore, and I didn't see the shadow in our new house. One day I was showering. My sister came into the bathroom and said, don't open the curtains. She said that her friend was going to use the bathroom because she couldn't hold it any longer. I said, okay. I knew someone was there because I heard noises. Then I heard the door close, so I came out of the bathroom. I asked my sister which one of her friends came, and she answered, no one came over. What are you talking about? I got chills and I started to freak out. About two months later, I was sleeping in my parents' room with my mom and dad because I was scared to sleep alone in my own room. I woke up in the middle of the night, I sat down on the bed, and then I saw something truly horrifying. I saw a lady in all white standing near the bedroom door just watching me. I screamed and my parents woke up. They asked me what happened and I pointed at the lady that scared me. They asked me what I was talking about because there was no one there. I pointed toward its direction and said that there's a lady right there. My dad got up to turn on the lights. He walked right through the lady. As soon as he turned on the lights, the lady disappeared. We moved about three months later. When we were unpacking, I saw a picture of a lady. She looked familiar. When I remembered where I saw her, I got chills. It was the lady I saw when I woke up in the middle of the night. I asked my dad who was the lady in the picture. He told me she was my grandma. He also told me she died when he was 23 years old. My dad was now at the age of 41 when he told me. I got really scared after that. Now when I wake up in the middle of the night, I try my best to go straight back to sleep. When I was a kid, I was really into paranormal things such as ghosts and spirits, so I always got really excited for Halloween. On one Halloween, my parents took me and my brother to a ghost tour in the city. During the tour, we would visit real haunted houses, which were said to have some really violent ghosts. I couldn't be more excited. We arrived at the location for the tour meetup, an empty parking lot, but we were a bit early and nobody else had arrived yet. It was a chilly October night, so my parents decided that we should find a building to wait in until more people arrive. We walked over to the building that the parking lot was meant for, an old hotel, and entered the vestibule. We tried to fully enter the building, but we found that the doors leading to the lobby inside were locked. After a few minutes of standing around, I started to feel strange. A nauseous feeling had swept my stomach. Goosebumps ran up and down my arms, and a piercing feeling of being watched was stabbing, almost burning my back. Looking around, it was obvious that me and my family were the only ones inside the vestibule. The lobby of the building was also devoid of people. Once we saw people enter the parking lot, we left, and I felt better. And after that, I was shocked to see the first place we stopped on the tour was the building my family had been waiting in. Now, this building we won't enter, because the spirit inside here is more violent than the others will encounter. The guide stated, In here, we have the Shadow Man. He doesn't terrorize the whole building, just the area that you enter through. He's been known to slap and scratch people coming inside. A few pictures were passed around. All of a sudden, I don't know how and why, but I recognized that an inky black figure stood against the door's windows. Its eyes were glowing white, and it had long fingers and pointed nails. It was freaky to think that I might have been targeted by the Shadow Man, but I didn't think much of it until after the tour when my family went back home. 
I started to complain to my mom that my back was itching and burning, so she grabbed some ointment and told me she would look at it. We thought it was just a bug bite. We had been walking around outside at night after all. When she lifted my shirt, she asked when I had scratched my back. I told her I hadn't. She took a picture on her phone and showed it to me. I was met with a long red scratch leading from my shoulder to the middle of my back. The skin on my back was a shade of red, like a rash. Me and all of my family couldn't say anything but just turned back straight to our house. The shadow man had got me. I have a sister who got married when she was 18. She had a daughter named Susie. Her husband was unemployed. She had to work two jobs to support herself, her daughter, and her husband. Every day, she left the house at 8 a.m. and she only returned around 8 p.m. every night. Around this time, Susie had an imaginary friend. She told my sister it was a little girl named Disica. Susie would talk about her all the time. My sister even overheard her talking to Disica. It creeped her out, and after a while, she told Susie she was forbidden to talk about the girl. We weren't allowed to mention Disica when we came over to visit. One day, Susie told her mom, Disica is mad at you because you don't believe she's real. She comes to play with me when daddy closes the closet door after you leave, and he lets us out before you come home. My sister had no idea this was happening. Her husband was supposed to be watching Susie during the day. Instead, he would lock her in the closet with a box of cereal and leave her there all day. When my sister discovered what was going on, she kicked her husband out. The poor little girl spent so much time all alone, locked in a closet that she had conjured up an imaginary playmate for herself. My sister divorced her husband and got custody of Susie. She decided to move out of the house they were renting. When the moving van came, the old man who owned the house came over to help them. He was talking to my sister and said, I was always worried about your little girl on those basement stairs. My granddaughter fell down those basement stairs and broke her neck. She died in front of the closet down there. When she heard that, my sister got the chills. What was her name, she asked. It wasn't Desica, it wasn't. The old man looked at her and said her name was Jessica. She was only four years old. She couldn't say it properly. And how did you know that's how she said her name, Jessica? How did you know? My sister was in denial. She told him she didn't know what he was talking about. She refused to talk about it, grabbed the last of her things and left the house for good. Even today, we're still not allowed to talk about Susie and her imaginary friend, Disica. My sister remarried a few years later, and Susie got her a great new stepdad. But Susie, when we speak alone, she always brings up that little girl and what she looked like. And it still creeps me out to this day, because I don't really believe in that type of stuff with ghosts and paranormal, but there's no way that Susie could have known about that little girl. But who knows? Maybe they are real. And maybe not. I was young and fresh out of high school. I needed work, so I sent in resumes to all sort of entry-level positions. I got a few responses. I settled on McDonald's because it was an easy commute. Plus, the employee discount was pretty cool. The only position they had was a night shift, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. I'm fine with that because I was already a night owl. The first few days working there were fine. I wasn't working the counter or anything, just doing back end stuff and cleanup. Our building was in a little strip mall off a highway exit. It's the only place there that's open at night but we get a decent amount of customers, most of which go through the drive through On the Friday of my second week working there, or maybe it was a really early Saturday morning at that point, I'm not sure, 
It was just late. I remember I was grabbing the stacked trays from the lobby when someone walked in through the doors. It was a woman. She was really tall and pretty, made up super fancy in a long dress with high heels. She was wearing a big hat too. Eccentric, not your average McDonald's customer. But what was weird was that I never saw a car pull up. We have a full view of the parking lot from the window, but no car ever dropped her off. She must have walked here. I smiled at her as I walked by and headed behind the counter. I bent down to restack the trays below, expecting my coworker standing at the register to serve her. He didn't say anything though, and after I'd finished, I stood up to find out why the girl wasn't ordering anything. But she wasn't there when I looked up. I never heard the door open, she was just gone. I asked the guy on the till where the girl went, and he replied, who? I said the girl with the hat, and he just looked at me like I was dumb, telling me he had no clue who I was talking about. So I tried to rationalize it, deciding she had probably stepped in the door, took a look at our grubby menu, and left. But something was weird about the whole thing. It didn't really make sense why someone who looked and dressed like that would be at a random McDonald's in the middle of the night. Whatever. The shift went on normally for the next hour. Then I remember taking a break after cleaning the toilets. I sat down on a chair in the back near the kitchen when I heard heels clicking on the floor. It was quite audible, louder than if someone was just walking. It sounded like stomping, sort of. So I peer out into the lobby. My coworker was gone from the front. I figured he went to take his break, but you know who I do see. That same woman. Only this time someone was with her. A man. He wore a tuxedo with fancy black shoes. They were dancing together, like full-on ballroom dancing in the lobby. Swinging back and forth, it was the most bizarre thing I'd ever seen. I remember watching them for a bit, mesmerized, before I took my place behind the register. I said something along the lines of, uh, can I help you? They both looked at me at the same time. As they stared, I felt a hand grab my shoulder with a firm grip. Instinctually, I turned around. No one was there. I knew someone had touched me, but there wasn't anyone, so I spun back to the lobby where the people were to find them both gone. The man and the woman had just vanished. Once again, I didn't hear doors open or close. I didn't hear their fancy shoes skid on the floor. They were just there one minute and gone the next. For the rest of the night, only a few small things happened. At one point, I walked by the washrooms on my way to do something, to find both doors swinging, the male and female ones, like someone had just crashed through both of them. A little while later, I remember looking for something on the shelves in the back near the employee entrance, and something banged on the door, hard. Something heavy hit it, and only once. I remember opening it, looking around, and seeing no one. After that, the shift was regular. Really not much to say. I was really happy when I finally got off, though. The first bits of sunlight had just begun to come over the horizon as I left for my car. I was punching out ten minutes before I was supposed to, but I didn't think the people coming in would care. As I hit the parking lot, though, I see a car. It looked like a small limousine. It was just sitting there in front of the restaurant. Through the light from the street lamp, I could make out the doors opening. Two people got out, one on each side of the car. It was the man and the woman I'd seen before. The same people that were dancing. Only their appearance had changed. Their clothes seemed torn and ragged. I could see the woman's dress clearly because it was white. It was covered in dirt with holes and tears. 
and their faces. Their faces were terrifying, their skin was bleach white, and their eyes, which were previously normal, were this beady black, like oversized bugs were looking at me. I stood there, frozen as I looked at them. Then the man spoke in a deep, filtered voice that seemed to echo from all around me. Would you like a ride? We have room for one more. Shaking my head was all I could muster. Without another word, the two people, if you can call them that, got into their car, shut the doors, and pulled away. None of their lights were on. I watched wide-eyed as the limo drove down the road before disappearing into the darkness of the early morning. When I was eight years old, I didn't have any friends. My mom wouldn't allow me to play outside with the other kids in our neighborhood. I was always alone. The only playmates I had were my cousins and my brother, but it took three hours and 25 minutes to get to their houses. One day, my mom let me play outside with the kids in our neighborhood for the first time because she was going somewhere, maybe to work or to run errands. I got my dolls and other toys and was excited to play with the kids outside. When I got there, no one wanted to play with me. The attempt was useless, but then someone approached me. He had puppy eyes and was cute. We quickly became playmates. Even though he was a boy, he would join me for tea parties with my dolls. He also invited me to play with him at his house, but I was confused because his house looked old and abandoned. Like it hadn't been cleaned up for almost 12 years. We decided to go play in his garden. When we got there, I puked. I didn't know why at the time, but for some reason, I was disgusted. He didn't offer me water or anything. He just looked at me grinning and said, next time you're going to sleep here too. Two weeks after that upsetting experience, I went looking for him. A paper airplane flew to me out of nowhere. I picked it up and when I opened it, I was shocked, scared, and sad. It was a newspaper clipping. The boy that I played with went missing nine years ago. I ran to my bedroom and I saw a shadow through my window. I looked at it closely and it was the boy. He was smiling. Today, I'm 19 years old and I still remember that part of my childhood so clearly. When I was four years old, my family and I used to live in a huge apartment. Along with the apartment complex was a huge basement where we could do our laundry. However, in order to get there, we had to take the elevator. One day, my mom was doing the laundry. My brothers and I accompanied her. My two brothers were playing together. Meanwhile, I was wandering off to the dark basement's hallway. As I walked in further, I saw bloody footprints that were the same size as my feet. I followed the footsteps, and they suddenly stopped at the end of the hallway. I looked up and I saw two kids, a boy with brown hair and brown eyes and a girl with blonde hair and brown eyes. They were both my age. There was something odd about them, but like any other five-year-old, I just ignored it. I turned my head around to see if there was anyone else in the hallway, but there wasn't. As I turned my head around to look at the kids again, they vanished. I was confused. I mean, how could that be possible? There was only a wall in front of me. A few days later, I was getting into the elevator. As soon as I entered, I saw the kids again. I asked them where their mom and dad were, but they didn't respond. I turned around and I pressed the button to go to the third floor. And as I turned back to them, again, they were gone. I was shocked. So I told the janitor about what happened. Apparently, there was a horrible situation some time ago. A family used to live here and the parents killed their own children. Now their ghosts haunt the whole complex in search for their bodies. Several years have passed and we moved out. 
but I still wonder if they ever ended up finding their bodies. One day, I was on my way back from a school party. I was with my friends, but please keep in mind I was only 20 years old. We were drunk, so we really didn't know where our Uber driver was taking us. He took us through this road called Sonol in California, and everyone in the car knew this road had a very upsetting story behind it. We didn't care, since we were all drunk, and it was 3 a.m. We just wanted to go home. At what seemed like the end of the ride, the driver stopped at the side of the road and let in this girl. She sat in the back seat of the car. She claimed her name was Mary. All of our hearts dropped when we saw she had a dress on. It was a white dress. She also claimed that her husband dumped her on her wedding night. She said she was trying to find a ride for three hours, but she couldn't since it was too dark outside. When I got a good look at her, I was shaking because she was tearing up blood. I whispered to my good friend Dominic. I told him about the Bloody Mary story. I told him that it took place on this very road and that the girl might be a ghost. Right as I finished that sentence, she looked at me through the rearview mirror with her bright, white eyes and asked us if we were talking about her. My heart dropped once again. We asked the guy to pull over, but he insisted on dropping us off at our location. One of my female friends in the car started crying after Mary started reciting all of our names from the back of the car. We were scared because we didn't tell her our names. Now everyone in the car was crying except for me. It felt like we were driving forever, but it had only been 10 minutes. It got brighter out, and we realized that no one was in the back. It was a night spirit that was there, and it left because it was now morning. The next morning, I thought about what happened while I was taking a shower. When I looked in the mirror, I saw a scratch on my neck. I was born in 1984. This incident was from 1989. I was five years old then. I'm a guy, the middle child of five siblings. It was late 1989 when my mom was giving birth to our youngest sister. My mom was having labor and my dad and a family friend were taking her to the hospital of our town. My eldest sister and I were left alone at home. I have no clue about ghosts and hauntings by that time. I wasn't sure how much time has passed since they left for the hospital, but I guessed it's about midnight or just before it, when my sister fell asleep. I was sitting beside her on the couch. I am sure I was wide awake and watching my elder sis sleeping. The couch was just by the window, and the window was high above the ground. There's no way anyone could climb up the wall. It was then at that exact moment that I saw a hand on the outside of the window pane. The hand of a baby from the wrist upward with the palm facing me. Maybe I was too young to get scared or I didn't know how to react. I'm not sure. I just kept staring at the hand. At that time, I thought that the hand was of my to be born younger babies. I can't tell what exactly happened after that. What I'm sure of was that my parents came home the next morning with our new baby sister. I told my mom about the thing after I was 25 years old, but I've got chills when I think about that night. I wonder why I didn't get scared or horrified. Maybe I was too young, as I've said before. I don't know. I'm sure I saw what I saw. If that night was not then, but one of these nights, I'd be screaming my lungs out or froze to death. This incident took place in Dubai when I was 10. I used to go to my friend's apartment to play with him at the time of vacation. One day, as usual, I went to his room to play. After playing for a long time, I went to the bathroom. 
While I was washing my face off and other things, things suddenly started to fall down. I was surprised. I thought maybe it was because of wind, but when I checked the surroundings, I found out there wasn't any window in the bathroom. I got out and told my friend the incident. He told me that there's a ghost in his room. I freaked out. At first, I didn't believe him. However, then next, his mother and father explained the paranormal activities which had taken place there since they moved into that place. His father was making a burrito in the kitchen one day, and suddenly a call came for him. He kept the burrito on the stove and attended the call. After attending the call, when he came back, he was surprised to find out that the burrito was burning down in flames from the stove, but he said he was definitely sure that he hadn't turned on the stove yet. Another day, while his mother was cooking food, suddenly she felt as if someone was choking her by holding her throat from behind, and she fled out of the kitchen with a scream. The same day, while they were sleeping at night, they heard sounds from the bathroom. And when they checked it out, they found all the things, such as bottles of toilet cleaner and other things, had been scattered inside the bathroom. And that story made me suddenly freeze. This was the exact same incident which occurred to me. They had called some group of ghost hunters and did some sort of rituals and found out that two people had been murdered by someone. To know if this was true, they went to the flat owner and he said just the same thing like the ghost hunters and apologized for giving them this room. They moved out the next day after my visit to their house. Well, to this day, I still wonder what would have happened to me if I had stayed there for some more time. My name is Christian. This happened three years ago, and I was living in a dormitory with my best friend, Miko. I was a civil engineering student at that time, and Miko was a pharmacy student. The dormitory where we were staying had nine rooms overall. Our room was quite small, but enough space for two people. The kitchen was at the opposite end of the entrance door, and we had no fire exit. The restroom was just at the left side of the kitchen, and the bed that we even shared together was on the right side. And there was a table in the middle where we used to eat or make it as a study table. Our dormitory had rumors about ghosts in there, but we hadn't encountered any in our two years stay. So one day on Friday morning, before going to school, we decided to put a hot cup of coffee in the sink. I know that was such a stupid thing, but we were curious about it. If this became empty when we came back from the school, then this is a haunted dormitory, I told him. Then we left for school, and soon I forgot about the coffee thing because I was quite busy with the calculus examination. After that, when I came back to the dorm, around 7 p.m., I saw Miko was sleeping in his bed. It was quite weird since usually when I come back to the room, he was either playing games or cooking in the kitchen. But it didn't bother me since it was a midterm season and I thought that he might just be exhausted. Suddenly, I remembered the mug of coffee that we put in the sink earlier in the morning. I put my bag on the table and headed straight to the sink. I saw the coffee was still full, so I said, told you, there's no ghost. So I poured out the hot coffee and washed the cup. Right after I washed the cup, my phone inside my pocket vibrated. Someone was calling me. I looked at the phone, and it was Miko. I stared at the bed where Miko was still lying and sleeping. I shouted, hey man, why are you calling me? But he didn't respond. So I thought inside my head, did he leave his phone at school? I answered the call, hello? To my shock and disbelief, it was Miko. It was his voice and he said, dude, just eat without me if you're already hungry. I'm still at the mall buying our food supply for next week. I was frozen. I was so confused and terrified at the time until I got the courage to say, are you serious? He said, yeah, sorry, but I'm almost done at the counter. I'm just going to drive home now. If you can wait, let's eat together. Bye. And hung up. 
I was there standing still in the kitchen and couldn't move while still looking at the man in the bed. Then I realized the cup of coffee. We left it in the morning. When I went to the dorm, it was not empty as we expected, but it was still hot. It should have cooled down. I looked back at the sink for one second, and to my terror, when I looked again at the bed, he was no longer there. I screamed, ran out of the room, and waited for my best friend. When Miko was finally home after 40 minutes, I told him what happened and saw his confused, scared reaction. After that night, we decided to transfer to another dormitory, and fortunately, nothing happened anymore in the new place. But I will never forget this memory, forever. When I was a little girl, I was scared of sleeping alone, so I used to sleep with my mom. Eventually, I had to toughen up and sleep by myself. Well, this happened when I was in high school. I had a twin-sized bed in my room and decided to leave both my door and my mom's door open. Our bodies were facing opposite directions. I couldn't sleep that night, so I turned on my MP3 player and was laying in bed, listening to music. All of a sudden, I felt a little strange, so I turned my head around, and at that moment, I froze. I saw a person's foot on my mom's body. First of all, if someone gets too nervous, it's hard to look around clearly. However, I slowly looked up, and then I saw the face of the person standing on her body. Literally, someone was standing on my mom's body. Well, it was the worst thing I've ever seen. I wanted to turn my head around again, but I couldn't. I couldn't open my mouth or even listen to music anymore. I couldn't take my eyes off his face. His mouth was stretching and getting bigger and bigger until eventually it ripped right under his ear. I could see that the inside of his mouth was all red. I wanted to wake my mom up somehow, so I gathered up enough courage as I could. Mom! As soon as I yelled, everything disappeared like smoke. She ran into my room, hugged me, and reassured me that everything was okay. I was leaning on her now, so that I could calm down. Soon after, I put my earphones back in and turned on my MP3 player. And that moment was really crazy and just plain scary. All of my files were gone. I had around 300 songs on the device, but all the songs were erased for no reason. I couldn't sleep at all that night and still felt bad even after waking up the next morning, so I ended up breaking my MP3 player. This happened not long after we moved into our house in 2003. It was a nice and big house, which was made in the 1950s. One day, I was in my backyard watering the grass, and then, out of the corner of my eye, I saw something that made me pause. There was a man standing next to the shrubs near our backyard's wall. He was dressed like a carpenter. His head looked like it was tilted sideways, and his body was slightly facing our fences sideways. Then he saw me and smiled kindly at me. At first, I thought he was fixing someone's house and that it was his job. However, only after he faced me, I realized that wasn't the case. When I looked at him with narrowed eyes, I noticed that his neck was visibly broken, causing his head to awkwardly tilt to the side. I then saw that he waved at me once, but I was too shocked to scream at the time. After I regained consciousness, I looked around, but he had vanished and had literally faded away. Two nights later, I woke up at 3 a.m. Noise was coming from my ceiling. It sounded like someone wearing construction boots was walking very slowly. I started to freak out, thinking that it might be a thief. However, I suddenly realized 
that that part of the roof was so thin, which meant nobody could walk on it. The steps abruptly stopped after a while, and when I felt at ease, I heard another horrible sound. I heard a sharp scream that sounded like a man, then a loud thud, as if someone had dropped on my ceiling followed after. I covered my head with a blanket, my hands and whole body shivered, and after ten minutes of nothing, I peeked outside. It was completely quiet. I saw and heard nothing, but I couldn't fall back asleep that night. The next morning, I started to look up the history of the house. To my surprise, it turned out that there was a report about the carpenter I met a few days before in the backyard. In 1958, he had been hired to fix the roof while the owners were on vacation. However, the carpenter had fallen abruptly through the weak spot on the roof while he was working and had broken his neck. He couldn't scream for help, and no one ever knew what happened to him as the owners were gone for two weeks. He was finally found when they came back, but had already died. This happened right above my bedroom. Suddenly, I felt bad for the poor guy, and I guess he's still looking after things. Since then, I've seen him sometimes, but I'm no longer afraid of him. It was in sixth grade in junior high school. I remember this one specific day when there was a thunderstorm. I was heading to gym where the gym teacher greets each student outside of the girls' locker room as usual. I went inside the locker room. I was getting ready to change into my gym clothes as usual and I noticed at the corner of my eye, a shadow was walking past at the other side of the lockers. I looked and said, is anybody here? There was no answer, so I took my gym clothes with me and thought stupidly that I should follow where the shadow was heading. I went to the back of the lockers where the shower room was. I opened every curtain from each shower booth except the one in the last. All of a sudden, the light that was illuminating in the back started to blink. I don't know where my courage came from but I decided to open the last curtain in the back. And when I did, there was nothing. I turned around, but then I heard someone <coughs> crying in the shower booth. So I opened the other curtain again quickly, but still, there was nothing. It was rather strange to me because at that moment, I felt cold. I heard in the distance talking and it was a few girls walking past. I asked them if they saw anyone who was crying, but they said no. It was literally weird. When all the students arrived, the gym teacher asked one of the girls to open the gym doors. Usually, I'm the one that opens the gym doors, but she decided to let someone else have the turn. We were waiting for her, and then we heard a loud, sharp scream. Shortly, that girl ran into the locker room and cried. We were all confused, and she told us that she saw something, a baby, covered in blood. I went to the gym. The keys were on the floor. The gym door was opened, and I tried to turn on the lights, but they were completely off. I wasn't sure, but thought maybe, somehow, it was due to the thunderstorm. I couldn't see anything, because it was too dark. And when I stepped inside the gym, I heard crying. It was a baby crying, and it was coming from the stage. I was frozen, but I wanted to check what was going on here. I went closer to the stage, but the crying abruptly stopped and was followed by a crack noise. <coughs> then I heard crying from another girl. She was sobbing. All of a sudden, the lights were on. My teacher grabbed me and asked if I was okay. I told her that I heard something but didn't see anything. She looked at me calmly and said, I know what you're talking about. You're lucky that you didn't see anything. 
Then, she said, when she was working late one day, she saw a body floating in the swimming pool which is close to the gym. She thought it was one of the students, so she tried to save that person. When I tried to get to her, it was completely gone, she said. And then she told me there was the ghost of the girl who drowned a few years back. This girl was pregnant and she gave birth in the shower booth. She didn't want it, so she killed the baby by breaking its neck. Later on, she regretted what she did, so she drowned herself in the swimming pool. When I heard the whole story from my teacher, I felt a little bit sad. After that, I didn't see or hear anything, but I'm still wondering what was the shadow I saw in the locker room. And sometimes, it still gives me goosebumps when I think about it. Especially the crying of the baby and the bone cracking noise. If the gym teacher did not come along, would I have seen that ghost of a girl holding the baby? Well, other than that, I just feel grateful that I didn't see anything that would shock me for my whole life. This is a story that my friend actually experienced. My friend had a habit of sleeping with both arms stretching over his head as if he were doing a hurrah. One day, he was sleeping in that same position as usual. However, suddenly he couldn't move his body. There was a big window by his bedside, and because it was summer, he was sleeping with the windows wide open. All of a sudden, he could see a woman through the window. Her face looked kind of weird as if she wasn't a human at all. The woman with a creepy face pulled my friend's arm violently. At that moment, he saw her mouth had almost ripped up to her ears. She gave the most horrifying loud laugh when she pulled his arm, and my friend who was struggling was soon released from his sleep paralysis. When I came to my senses, there was a thick bruise on both of my arms with handprints, he said. I live in the countryside, and there was a pretty famous reservoir in our area. One evening, one of my father's friends drove me home in a car, and we were just passing through that area. All of a sudden, a woman softly walking into the reservoir caught my eye. I couldn't see her face, but she had black clothing covering it, and she just went into the reservoir in the blink of an eye. My dad's friend next to me also saw the figure, and at that moment, neither of us could say anything. Then he stepped on the gas like a crazy man. After arriving home, he made sure I went inside the house and even said to me to not forget to check the door before I go to bed. Not long after, the broadcasting authorities came to the reservoir with some famous celebrities to shoot some kind of TV program. And seeing those celebrities falling into the reservoir somehow made me sick. I have no idea if the person I had seen that day was a person or a ghost. But after that, there are always four people who die there every year. When I was young, there was an accident where one of my older sister's classmates slipped on ice while playing and died of a concussion. Her friend's name was Billy. A few years later, my mom suddenly brought up the story about Billy to my sister while we were staying at home. Hey, do you guys remember the kid who died of a concussion? Your friend, Billy? Then I heard someone abruptly knocking on our front door. The apartment where I lived had a hallway with several houses side by side, but the hallway was kind of old so the sound of people walking around outside seemed very loud. Furthermore, there wasn't a sign of anyone that day, but someone had just knocked on my door. My mom, my sister, and I stood at the back without saying anything to each other, thinking something was wrong. The constant knocking continued, and my mom finally answered. Who is it? Then someone from outside said, Is Billy here? Is Billy here? Is Billy here? It was a woman and she asked these three same questions in a very dry voice. 
No, he's not here. When my mom said it like this, it became quiet outside. And when I looked through the peephole, she was already gone. I couldn't even hear the sound of footsteps. To this day, I still wonder who she was. My name is Arnie. A couple of years ago in the summer, we moved into a new house that was much bigger than our old house. The inside of the house was very huge. Everybody was satisfied with the house. But for some reason, I couldn't get rid of the unnerving feeling. One night, I stayed up late, alone watching some scary movies on my phone. All of a sudden, I heard what sounded like someone singing. At first, I thought maybe I was just paranoid or it was coming from the movie I was watching. However, it kept going for like 15 minutes, even though I turned down the volume. I looked at my watch and it was almost 3 a.m. It sounded like a woman, and her voice would get very close to my room, then it would slowly move through our halls, and then after a few minutes, it vanished. I was creeped out, but I eventually went back to bed because nothing I could do about it. When I woke up in the morning, I asked my mother and sister if they had heard someone singing last night. They just shook their heads, and they even asked me if I was okay. I was puzzled by this, so the next night I decided to stay up to see if the woman would sing again. Later that night I was almost falling asleep, but then I heard it again. The time was exactly 3 a.m., I was so scared, too scared to go see who or what it was. I was pretty sure that I was the only one who was awake in the house. So I went out into the hallway quietly. And when I turned my head toward the hallway, I froze in fear. There was a woman who I've never seen before standing at the end of the long hallway and staring at me with a blank look. She was wearing a white dress had long, straight black hair, and was singing that same bone-chilling song that I heard when I was in my room. I wanted to run back to my bed, but I couldn't move my legs for some reason. Then, the woman started slowly moving toward me, and what I noticed at that moment still gives me a chill to this day. She wasn't walking, but I could say that she was rather hovering a couple inches off the ground. As she was coming closer and closer, I could see that her mouth was almost ripping, and that was the most horrible thing I've ever seen in my life. I eventually passed out, and when I woke up in a panic, it was 3.30 a.m. I looked around the dark hallway, but she wasn't there anymore. Well, we still live in that house. And I've heard that dreaded singing from that woman moving throughout my house about twice a month. I told my friends about it, but no one ever believed me. I just hope that no one else has to experience this terrifying thing. There is a road that I always drive through for work day after day. Although it was a quiet place, I didn't pay much attention to it, as it has always a few cars on the road. However, something started to bother me at some point. There was a man standing on the same side of the road almost every day with no expression. Late at night or early daybreak, it hasn't been long since I noticed he was always in the same place in all weather. So one day, I talked to my colleague about the man, and he suddenly said, he seemed like a very famous man around that place. But you know what? No matter where you see him, you will always see his face from the front. No one has literally seen his back or even his side. Moreover, there are strangely many accidents on that road. So everyone says that's a curse from that dude. For now, everyone just passes him on the road and ignores him. I suddenly became curious about him. That day on my way back home from work, I was driving on the road where the man stood, and the man was standing there as usual and looking straight at me. As I was passing the side of him, I turned my head to see him sideways, 
but he was already staring at me straight in his face. Now I passed the man and looked into the side mirror to see his back, but still he was looking at me straight. It made me feel creepy enough. After I arrived at home, another curiosity sprang up. So he kept staring at me, but I couldn't really see him moving. He definitely moved when I just took my eyes off for a moment. Then what happens if I keep staring at the man without taking my eyes off of him? The next day I headed to the same place. It was time to put the way I thought yesterday into practice. And he surely stood in the same places, staring straight at me. I began to keep my eyes on him from the moment I first saw him and watched him until the moment I passed by. And of course, when I didn't take my eyes off him, he didn't look back at me either. The side of the mystery man began to be seen little by little, and I noticed that it was no different from the other ordinary person. But I felt excited like a child who had just discovered the hidden treasure. Besides, it would be perfect if I see his backside last. I had already turned my head 180 degrees and looked back dangerously before I knew it. I couldn't see the back well, so I was trying to turn back, putting my hands off the steering wheel. Now the back of him was finally seen by my eyes. Being satisfied, I was about to exclaim, and at that moment, BAM! Then I suddenly lost my mind. When I woke up again, I was lying in the hospital, and fortunately I was not seriously hurt though. What a stupid! Why did I do that? Was I possessed by something? While thinking about those things, a man in a police uniform knocked on the door of the room and came inside. Hi, I came here to hear what happened to you yesterday. So I frankly confessed that I had acted rashly to see the back of the man standing on the road and admitted that the accident had happened. I told him that I don't know why I suddenly thought so. Just then, the cop who was listening to me without saying anything said to me, and that one sentence that he had told me still remained in my head long after the incident. Since that day, I've been avoiding the road wherever I go to work or come back home. Shoot, that dude didn't take you this time. In December of 2006, I was 15 years old at the time. I had an extreme fear of the dark. While laying in bed, I would always cover my mirror, or I'd face the opposite side of the room that my mirror was on. I'd also make sure that I didn't stare at any dark corners of my room, along with my closet, which was very dark space that I couldn't help but face because it was on the opposite side of the room from my mirror. The next thing was that if I look in the mirror from my bed, I could see my closet. So one night, for some reason, I decided that I wanted to get over my fear of the dark. When I went to bed, I didn't cover up my mirror, didn't put my head under the covers, nor did I face the opposite side of the room from my mirror. I laid down, turned my lamp off, and stared at my mirror. Then I guess I fell asleep. When I woke up, I was looking at my door. Then I panned my eyes over to my mirror. And to my surprise, there was someone standing in the darkness of my closet that I saw in the mirror. I fumbled to turn on my lamp, and I looked at my closet, but no one was there. I told my parents what happened. For some reason, they said it was my imagination. My 15-year-old imagination, I guess. I told them that I wasn't three years old, and I know what I saw. A week later, I got up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, and I looked in the mirror, surprisingly seeing the same dark figure in my mirror. But he was closer to my bed. A lot closer. I ran screaming out of my room and told my parents again. I told them that there's no way that I will sleep in my room again. So my father said he was sleeping there starting the next night, in which I pleaded for him not to do it. Of course, he didn't listen and went anyway. The first few nights there was nothing happening. My father didn't understand what scared me, but insisted that I never go in the room again. I'd go in there and grab anything that I needed. One night, my parents were placing more gifts under our Christmas tree while joking about the so-called monster in my room, as my father says. This whole time while he slept in my room, I slept in his with my mother, but I was on the floor. We all watched the movie and went to bed like usual. But my mother and I watched the Grinch movie, and that's when I guess I dozed off. <laughs> 
My mother and I were startled hearing my father scream like that. We both ran into my room. My father was grabbing his left arm in the left side of his chest area. At the same time, he was pointing at the mirror with a startled look. My mother screamed for me to call 911, in which I ran to another room to call. When I came back, my mother was crying uncontrollably and my father wasn't moving anymore. His eyes were wide open in the direction of the mirror that stuck on it. My father passed away from a massive heart attack. After that night, my uncles and grandparents helped us move out because we didn't want to stay there anymore. My grandfather found a journal on the nightstand next to my bed. I never put it there. My mother looked at it and said it was my father's handwriting. What we didn't know was that my father kept a log for every night that he slept in my room. He mentioned that he saw someone in the mirror, and every night he would get closer to the point that the dark figure was standing over the bed. He just didn't tell anyone because he didn't want to scare us. I really don't know what to think honestly. Is this my fault that he's dead? I know our Christmas that year is not joyful as we wanted it to be. When I was in elementary school, a prank pretending to be a ghost and making people frightened had caught on through SNS. In my case, I was still young at that time. I also wanted to try that prank, so that evening, I went to the stairway of the apartment's emergency exit, crouched down on the stair, and waited for the people to come in. Just then, I saw a boy coming to the emergency exit. He didn't say anything, but just stared at me. I thought it was a perfect time, so I decided to play a prank on him. Do you see me? I was laughing up my sleeve, and then I suddenly saw his chilling grin. Wow, you see me too? As soon as he asked me back, I felt like my mind went blank at that moment. The exit was completely dark. Then the sensor lights once blinked. When I looked forward, there was a boy standing in a weird position that people could not even try. He was staring at me with his body facing the exit and his neck turning 180 degrees. I jumped up to the exit in fear. As soon as I turned around before opening the door, I saw his head begin to turn slowly, staring at me with a curious look. And then I could barely get out from there. The Man in the Subway I used to go to the academy by subway. One day I was sitting at the end of the seat by the door and an old man was sitting right next to me. Then the subway stopped at one station. The moment the door in front of me opened, the guy came in from the side door of me at the same time. The door next to me won't be able to open due to the system, so how could a person come in through there? I still remember this moment vividly. When I glanced slightly to the side, he was wearing a sweatshirt, and I could see that he was just standing there with a blank look. The old man sitting next to me said to me, who was staring blankly at the man, Kid, you have to pretend not to see that thing. My mom is quite a tough person. Her first impression, her way of speaking, and even her personality were so tough that she was often told that she would have succeeded if she becomes a shaman whenever she went to see a fortune teller. I guess that's why my mom has seen ghosts since she was very young. Sometimes she always told me this whenever we went driving to go somewhere. You know there are many ghosts around in this town. According to her, there's a rule in areas with a lot of ghosts. She said that they exist usually in areas with large bodies of water, like rivers or lakes. Because those places had strong yin energy, the ghosts have nothing to do but just stay there. One day, Mom suddenly started screaming as we were driving along the road next to the river. Then she said that this place was full of ghosts. When I asked which place it was, she pointed her finger at one specific area near the water and replied, Right there. My heart dropped at that very moment. After we passed that area, she kept looking back and saying that it was strange. And something more horrifying happened after that. A few days later, we heard that an unidentified body was found by the river while watching the news. And the place was where we had passed by that day, and it was exactly the same place that my mom pointed her finger. When I asked my mom making a fuss, she then answered as if nothing had happened. 
Oh well, so that's why. They were gathered to see that body. I ended up staying up all night that day because I kept thinking about the scene my mom told me about. I was in my friend's birthday party. It was 11 p.m. After the party, I drove my friend to their house, two hours away, drive from the party we'd been. When we went to their village, it's a pretty big village, and most of the owner is rich. While I was driving, there is a street there, kind of 500 meters long, and is very dark and creepy. The car I was driving is a Toyota Revo, it has 11 seating capacity, and we are just three inside the car. I pass that creepy street, I'm kind of scared because it's dark and a lot of trees that full of leaves and brushes. There's no street light, it's just my car headlights that give light on the road. After we pass that street and I am dropped them on their house and I'm just alone to go back to my home. But I was scared because there's no alternate route. I really need to pass that creepy street in their village. I have no choice but to be brave. So, when I'm about to pass that street, it's really dark, but I have no choice but to pass that creepy street. While I was driving on that creepy street, about in the middle of it, suddenly, I felt cold, but my aircon temperature was not that cold, and suddenly, my back of the neck starts to feel cold. When I look in my rear mirror view, I saw something sitting on the back of Sit looking at me. It's a woman and wearing white clothes and red eyes. I was so scared, so I drive too fast and my car engines start making a lot of noise, and so fast. There's a speed bump, but I didn't stop. My car started to slam its front bumper on the road when I drive too fast in the speed bump because I was so scared, until I reached the guardhouse office. I told the guards what happened, and they told me there was really a ghost on that street because one time, there's a tricycle was passing that street, and someone, woman, asked if she could get a ride so the tricycle driver let her ride and she told the driver to drive her to the hospital when they arrived at the hospital the tricycle driver was so shocked because the woman she picked up was not inside the tricycle and my friend told me there's a story on that street several years ago that a girl was murdered and raped on that street because it was a lot of dark and tall bushes so when I'm driving alone I always ask someone to come with me during night and I don't want to drive alone at night anymore because I don't want to see again someone's ghost riding again with me. I hope her soul rests in peace. This story takes place when I was a junior high school student. One morning during summer vacation, after my father went to work, my mother and I decided to visit my maternal grandmother who lived in a rural area. Since my grandmother's house was located in the countryside, getting there required making a left turn, then driving for five minutes through a narrow, one-car-wide, unpaved road. There were rice fields and forest on the sides of the unpaved road. As soon as we arrived, I greeted my grandmother, then went into my youngest uncle's room. I used to like visiting my grandmother's house, because my uncle was a huge gaming fan and his computer was much better than mine at home. So once I confirmed my uncle was at work, I turned on his computer and started playing Doom 3, which used to be the most popular game once upon a time. After playing the game for about an hour or two, my uncle returned from work. Upon his arrival, my grandmother asked him to take her grocery shopping since my mother, my aunt, and I were visiting her house. So at about 7 p.m., they all drove to town to do some grocery shopping. I was super excited and waved goodbye to them. Since I think it is unnecessary to explain why I was excited, I'll just leave it. After enjoying about 90 minutes of free time, my uncle called. He said he was about to turn left on the road but one of the front wheels was punctured and asked me to bring him a new tire which was in the storage shed. As I said before, after making that left turn, it took about five minutes to drive through a narrow, unpaved single lane road to see my grandmother's house, but it took about 20 to 30 minutes on foot. Now that I think about it, 
It was quite scary to walk on that road, especially at night. It had no street lights and was surrounded by rice fields and forest. It was almost 9 p.m., and that area got quite dark at about 8 because it was in the country. So to be honest, I was really scared, but not wanting anyone to know I was a coward, I decided to go. I grabbed the tire, left the house, and started walking along the unpaved road. I could see my uncle shining his car's headlights toward me. That said, he was still quite far away from me, and the headlights looked like two big yellow dots. I was a bit relieved knowing my uncle and family were on the other end of this road, but the night was dark, which deepened my fear. You know, when you walk in the darkness, your eyes adjust, and you start to see unclear shapes. I felt like I could see someone standing in the rice field, and someone sitting down, resting his chin on his hands, and looking at me through the bushes. I broke out in a cold sweat and held my legs to keep them from shaking. It felt scarier than being alone on a pitch dark night, and because of the fear and the delusion I had created, I remember feeling really dizzy. After walking for about 20 minutes, I looked towards my uncle's car and realized I was nearly there. Feeling happier, I rolled the tire faster. I rushed to hand over the tire to him as soon as possible but saw something in front of me. I wasn't sure what it was because it was still a bit away from me, but it was something dark. Suddenly, I felt strange and slowed down. Since I wanted to determine what it was while still having some distance, I strained my head and neck trying to look carefully, but it was too dark. Although I was scared, I started to walk again thinking, Nothing is going to happen because I have my uncle and family about 300 meters away. But when I got closer to it, I stopped because it became clearly visible. It was an old woman squatting with her mouth open, looking at the rice fields. I could only see the side of her face, but my whole body shivered because her blank facial expression with her mouth open was now clearly visible in the darkness. Without realizing it, I walked really close to the old woman. For reasons I don't understand, walking by without saying anything seemed even scarier, so I started talking to her. With a frightened voice, I asked, Excuse me, what are you doing here at night? But she did not respond and kept looking at the rice field. On the verge of crying, I shouted, Excuse me! She then looked at me, and I felt my heart tightening. Even though it was dark, I could clearly see she had permed white hair, and I could only see the white parts of her eyes. The scariest thing were the huge wrinkles and stains covering her face and her wide open mouth. I felt strange, like I was going crazy while looking at her. I had eye contact but was looking down while she was looking up at me. After a few moments of eye contact, she turned her body toward me. Oh my gosh, I thought she was sitting down, but realized she had no lower body. She only had a torso and head which was supported from the ground with two arms. A flood of thoughts crossed my mind, but I remember thinking, there is Satan right in front of me. I felt like she was going to run into me with her two arms if I didn't move, so I grabbed the tire in my arms and sprinted with my eyes closed tightly. Without remembering how long I'd been running, I suddenly felt relieved. It was the next morning, and I was in my grandmother's room. When I asked my mother what happened, she said she was waiting for me in the car and saw me sprinting with my head down, holding the tire in my arms and suddenly fell off the road, causing my family to come out of the car shocked. After listening to my mother, I told her and my other family members what I went through. Thinking I had suffered a heat stroke, that evening my grandmother made me chicken soup. 
My uncle told me to stop playing horror games and wouldn't let me play Doom 3 anymore. From then on, I could only play a Star Wars racing game while staying at my grandmother's house. I still believe it was not a ghost that I saw that day. It was just an illusion caused by my mental weakness. <laughs>